Moravsky Trail or Morava Route Russian, Moravskij Sla Ukrainian, Moravskij Sla was an important trade route and according to the Russian historiography a favorite invasion route of the Crimean Tatars during the Russo-Crimean Wars of the 16th and early 17th centuries. As described in the book to the Great Chart of Muscovy 1627, the route went north from the Tatar fortress of Arkapi Perikop, the gateway of the Crimean Peninsula, east of the Dnieper to the Russian fortress of Tula, 193 km south of Moscow. To avoid major river crossings, the route followed the high ground between the basins of the Dnieper and Don, making an almost straight line from the Dnieper bend to Tula. It ran mostly through thinly populated tallgrass steppe country Morava is an old Slavic word for prairie or grassland avoiding forests, marshes and river crossings. Apart from the main route, there were a number of branches and bypaths, of which the Kalmius Trail and the Ism Trail were by far the most important. Between 1500 and 1550 there were 43 Tatars raids using this trail. In the wake of the Russo-Crimean War 1571, it became increasingly clear that only a defense line south of the main Zasiknaya Cherta would put an end to annual incursions. Such a chain of eleven forts and obstructions, the Belgorod Defense Line, was constructed at the behest of Boris Godunov, including, among other fortified settlements, the towns of Livni 1586, Voronezh 1586, Kursk 1587, rebuilt, Yelitz 1592, rebuilt, Steri Oskol 1593, Valiki 1593 and Belgorod 1596, rebuilt. After this, the Tatars began avoiding this route. It later became a main route used by the Cossacks to raid the Crimea. Topic. Tactics The Tatars preferred to invade at harvest time when forage was plentiful. Smaller raids were made in early winter when the rivers were frozen. Davies says that the journey to Moscow took 55 days. Larger raids were led by the Khan in person. The core of his force was a guard of 200 1,000 musketeers with light artillery and supply carts that could be formed into a wagonberg. The main force consisted of horse archers with reflex bows and short stirrups. They also had sabers and lances and the richer ones might have chain mail, helmets or muskets. Each man took one or two spare horses. They carried few supplies, preferring to live off the land. The army traveled in columns. Boplan estimated a column as 800 to 1,000 paces across and up to 10 leagues long. It was an amazing sight since 80,000 Tatars are accompanied by more than 200,000 horses. On nearing enemy territory they camped for a few days and sent out scouts to be sure there were no significant forces in the area. After penetration they sent out two wings of up to 10,000 men each from the main body to sweep the country for 10 or 12 leagues around taking women, children, horses, sheep and cattle and those men who chose not to resist. When the wings returned to the main corps, other wings were sent out in the same manner. Having harvested an area they withdrew by a different route. They did not waste time attacking fortified towns and avoided fighting organized forces unless they were forced to defend themselves. The returning columns, laden with booty, were most vulnerable to counterattack. The need to guard and escort captives kept the ratio of captives to raiders to about 1 to 3. Individual mirzas would lead smaller scale raids with a few thousand men. They would send out scouts to look for enemy forces and capture prisoners for interrogation and then sweep through an area 10 to 12 leagues broad, rendezvousing at a pre-arranged point each night. If attacked they would split into bands of about 100 men and scatter in all directions, reuniting later. <laughs> Route According to Davies, the trail started at Perikop about 1,100 km south of Moscow and ran northeast parallel to the Sea of Azov coast about two-thirds of the way and then swung north along the watershed between the basins of the Dnieper River and Donetsk. There it spread into branches through what later became the Sloboda Ukraine, the branches rejoining at Steri Oskol 618 km south of Moscow and Livni about 375 km south of Moscow. From Livni it went directly north to Tula and crossed the Oka River at Serpikov almost directly south of Moscow. In the spread out section there were three branches. The western branch was the Moravsky proper which ran northwest to about Valky and then northeast west of Belgorod to Livni. The center or Izyumsky trail seems to have run directly north along the south flowing part of the Donets and joined the Moravsky at Steri Oskol. 
The eastern or Kalmius branch ran east of the Donets and joined the others south of Livni. East of these was a route used by the Lesser Nogai Horde which ran from Azov to Livni. The Nogai Road proper was much farther east and ran from near Stalingrad through Kozlov to the Oka at Ryazan. He also mentions three trails running northwest from Perikop to Galicia. The Charny Trail went north toward Kiev with a branch at the latitude of Cherkasy going west to Galicia. The Kazman Trail followed the south bank of the Bug and the Volsky Trail followed the shore of the Black Sea and then the Dniester River. References This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, Brockhaus and Efron Encyclopedic Dictionary in Russian, 1906.